Come soon, then. They're threatening to send me down. How could they be so cruel to one so beautiful? Dons. They're so middle class. This is an intelligently told, ultimately sad story, beautifully designed and lit and studied with first-rate performances, especially by Jude Law as Bosey, Michael Sheen and Tom Wilkinson, who seems pretty well ubiquitous these days as the Marquis. The homosexual love scenes are explicit, which was not possible in the 1960 films, but not too explicit. No full frontals, but a few full rurals. You could quibble, and I do, that we aren't given enough sense of the danger Wild ran in consorting with rent boys and frequenting the Victorian equivalent of gay bars, or of the guilt and remorse that anyone as sensitive as he is here must surely have felt at his betrayal of his wife and beloved sons. But that apart, Wilde is a splendid achievement all round. And here now is Stephen Fry talking about the man and the movie. Stephen, you, uh, I think you said that you felt it was your destiny to play Oscar Wilde. Now, is that because uh, there is a physical resemblance or for some other reason? It's a sort of mix. I think it's really because it had been borne in on me that it was my destiny. I, I think about eight years ago or so, I was in a restaurant, Alan Bennett was passing and said, you know, you should play Oscar Wilde one day. You look just like him. I've been watching you eating, and you do. And I got to that age where one starts to develop new chins, and yeah. um, one's nipples descend an inch a year, and you slowly get more padded. And I had been very skinny as a boy and uh, as a young man. And the moment I put on weight, it suddenly, my face began to resemble his more. And so that starts you thinking, obviously it's not enough, but because I've always liked him so much, and um, he's been such a hero, it just sort of got into my system that if there were going to be a film about him and I didn't have a crack at playing him or a chance for an audition or something, I would feel sort of rather left out. So it, it, it's not that I really thought it was my destiny so much as I thought it would be a terrible shame if I didn't get a shot at it. You know. Oh, ab absolutely. Um, do, you, do you identify much with Oscar Wilde and if so, in, in what ways? I mean, I don't think I identify with him in any a special way. I mean, there's obviously the sexual way, but then that's sort of a large percentage of the population, so that's not particular. I think you know, one can overread connections, you know, the mm. fact that I've been to prison and he went to prison is, is really no more relevant to our similarity than the fact that we both might have drunk a cup of coffee, frankly, because his prison sentence was so entirely different from mine. His was, you know, the bringing down of a, of a huge, successful talent and a, a, a massive disgrace, the biggest scandal of its, of its age, whereas mine made a small footnote in a, in a Wiltshire newspaper <laughs> when I was 18, so they were very different. But I think anybody who's ever been famous, in, in a way, uh, knows a bit about what it's like to be Oscar Wilde because he almost invented celebrity. I mean, he was, there were cartoons of him in, the, in Punch and things before he'd even written anything. He was famous for being famous and was sort of bitten by the very machine that he had helped create, his self-image. And I think anybody um, who's ever been in the public eye has experienced something of that strange sense of dislocation when, when your public self and your private self suddenly start drifting apart and, and you feel, in some sense, lost. The film takes a determinedly sympathetic view, doesn't it, of, of, of Oscar? Um, I'm, I'm thinking in particular the, the trial scene. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not a, a great, I don't know a great deal about Oscar Wilde, but everything I'd heard before was that, in a sense, he contributed to his own downfall by showing off in the witness yeah. box. Now, in the film, you don't play him like that. You play him with dignity, being very amusing, but making very sensible yeah. statements. Now, where does the truth lie? Well... Um, it, I suppose it lies in what you include and what you exclude. I mean, the only things I say in the courtroom are things from the transcript, such as it was recorded by Montgomery Hyde. So I don't say anything different from previous versions, but we leave out some of the others. And I mean, there's no question we, we try to show, not so much the, the dignity of him, but it's, it's to, to, to go against a, a view of him that he was a, somehow a rather camp, queeny figure who just spouted epigrams. Um, in fact, he was a man of great gentleness and compassion and sympathy himself. And when he was in court, he was very impressive because although we, we telescope time a lot and we compress events, there were three um, uh, court cases. The first was his trying to sue Queensbury, which collapsed, and then the Crown tried to convict him. And on the first court case, uh, there was a hung jury. So it was a very close thing. And on the third one, he was found guilty and went for two years hard labour. And I don't think a jury would have, you know, would have been, found it hard to decide if he had just simply been showing off. I think they would, he would have irritated them, you know, the average Victorian jury. And he was a man who charmed people quite extraordinarily. He must have had a quality that made other people feel good rather than making them feel like pygmy, pygmies, you know. Yeah. When people left um, a table 
that Oscar Wilde had been sitting at. They didn't feel, I've been in the presence of someone great. They actually felt better themselves. Mm. You know, he, he really made people feel that they had something that they didn't know they had. He opened their eyes to things. What are you having? Pea soup and salmon. Then I shall join you. Spring is the time to lunch on salmon. Though I always think it tastes so much nicer if you've caught it yourself. You fish? I used to. When I lived in Ireland, my father had the most charming hunting lodge on an island in a lake. Do you know the west of Ireland? Not really. How about exactly? I think the film works extre extremely well. Um, your performance, particularly, Jude Law as, as, as Bosie, who, who's actually, in many ways, the villain of the piece, Bosie, isn't it? Because it, it's he who persuades Oscar against his better nature to take on this libel yeah. action against the Marquis of Queensbury. Yeah. It's, it's hard not to make Bosie the villain of the piece. I mean, Jude is a wonderful young actor. He was 23 when he did it, and yet he um, um, somehow seems to have the maturity of, of people twice mm. his age. Um, I mean, he knew, like any actor, that you can't play a character as a villain. On the other hand, you can't, you can't deny history. I mean, he did bring Oscar down. He was unreasonable, he was tempestuous, he was petulant, he was uh, impossible to deal with. He was arrogant and very hard and difficult man. Um, but on the other hand, he also had a terrible father who, yeah. who beat him and uh, kicked him when he was young. Um, he was what we would now call the product of a dysfunctional family, you know, an abused would, child, yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, he, w he would be the, the, you know, the subject of lots of Oprah Winfrey documentaries and things, and uh, we would all feel very sorry for him, <laughs> and rightly, in a way. But in those days, it, he was an aristocrat, and this is still a time when aristocrats ruled the roost, really. Mm. Um, but I think, I hope the film also shows that there was a quality between Bosie and Oscar, which, is, which was love, essentially, that... that Otherwise, Oscar's an idiot. I mean, to fall for someone who's entirely worthless. What relevance do you think the film and, and the story of Oscar Wilde has today? I, I think there are a number of ways that, I mean, certainly the story of Oscar Wilde has, and I hope the film suggests them. Um, one of them is simply a man who had the courage to be himself, and also a man who refused to, um, to bow down to an image of himself that other people wanted. But in the end, he did stay, and he may have stayed for reasons that are to do with vanity as much as courage. But as W.B. Yeats said, if Oscar Wilde had flee, had flown, had fleen... Fleed? Had fled. Oscar word, fleen. Fled, yeah. we like. Uh, fled is better, uh, yeah. <laughs> As Yeats said, if, if, if Wilde had fled, everyone would have understood, but he wouldn't quite have been the Oscar Wilde, the one admires. If you go, Oscar, I'll never speak to you again. No one will ever speak to me again, whatever I do. Of course I'm your son, Madre. Which is why, even if I lose, the English will never forget me. He is the, the eternal prince of Bohemia. He's the one who refuses to be bourgeoisified into a fixed moral set of values, who refuses to allow the herd to determine what he thinks and what he feels. Um, as he put it himself, he, he's the one who will try the fruit of every tree in every garden in the world. And some will be bitter and some will be poisonous. But at least, you know, on our deathbeds, um, we never say, you know, gosh, I wish I hadn't done that. Yeah. We will say, wish, I wish I had done that. Yeah. And, and he's the sort of prince of that attitude, I think. Now, having played that part, where do you go from here? You know, I mean, that, that is, your, your, is, is, the, is the first... Um, serious leading role mm. um, and uh, certainly the biggest leading role you had what's your next step what it james bond <laughs> <laughs> i i i mean I, in this business you've got to be realistic and and i know that i'm i'm not leading man material as a general rule you know i'm not going to get the same scripts that tom cruise is going to get or 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 ray fines is going to get you know um but uh i'm jolly lucky to get the odd part as a as a emotionally constipated um cold Englishman or a Bond villain or a drug baron or mm -hmm. something like that. And there's nothing wrong with those parts. They can be quite fun. Um, there are not many parts like Oscar Wilde that I might be suited to. Uh, in fact, I'm doing a, a, a jolly part in the John Travolta film in uh, November in Boston uh, called The Civil Action. Um, and that'll take me a month or so. Um, it's a very small part, but it, it's done in different locations. So I'll be able to spend a bit of time doing that. Well, in the meantime, I, I, I did enjoy Wilde very much. And hope it's a huge success. Thank you. Well, the role of a lifetime, and he did it full justice. But having said that, I hate to open old wounds, 
But unlike Wilde, Stephen Fry did flee when abruptly and famously he left the stage play Cellmates a couple of years ago and vanished to Bruges. Why Bruges? I wish I'd thought to ask him because it's a startling new concept, isn't it? When the going gets tough, the tough go to Belgium? Oh well.